Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Community. My name is Iman, and I'm very excited to jump into this episode. Um, this episode is episode nine. It's called BCR Maintenance and Educational Publishing. So here we are. I hope everyone is doing well. I hope we can all enjoy a good laugh today, and I'm ready to jump straight into this. It's settled. The urinals in the women's restroom will be turned into planters. On <laughs> We need some able bodies to clear out a space in the East Hall storage room. I'll do it. Really? Yeah, Annie always goes from the easy chores to the hardest. That's true, isn't it? I'll do it too. <laughs> it's so funny how good they know each other. <laughs> Ma'am, nobody picks up on my pattern. What are you going to say next? <laughs> hey, it's the ah uh, couple. Aww. Aww. <laughs> Interactive Old West scene. Happy anniversary. Anniversary. I guess I should learn your name, young lady. Oh, Rachel. Rachel. Nice to meet you, Rachel. You can go. <laughs> Anniversary? Yeah. Rachel and I have been dating for one of your months, but our relationship is 12 times more efficient, so it's really been a year. <laughs> our sync, we can communicate with our eyebrows, and she knows my Netflix password, Jeff's Netflix password. Damn it. I'm changing that. I changed it. To what? Nice try. Annie, can Rachel come to our place to play anywhere? Well, my brother's in town for the weekend. I'm broke too, so I was going to make him dinner tonight. Cool. Double date? Dinner and Double date. Game. What are you making? Salmon. Mm -hmm. Buttered noodles. Buttered noodles are my favorite. <laughs> ah, quick announcement. Oh my god, what? The finest. What? Payday is postponed until next week. So oh, Pete. Not far, and I'm here to say your checks will arrive on another day. Another day, <laughs> another time, another rhyme, another dollar. Another stuffed shirt with another white oh, collar. Oh, man. Those Wall Street taking the pie and all the black. How many times they'd have to film this scene? <laughs> He's scared of me because I don't swallow knowledge and I spit it, Marie. Let me clear my throat. Ha, ha, ha. I don't know what that was. I don't. <laughs> I don't know what that was. <laughs> the run. <laughs> so awesome. And the awe couple is so true because I'm even like awe. <laughs> it's nice to see Abed in a relationship. So, nice so this is her brother. Again. Remember when we used to cut carrots for mom? Yes. I need a soda. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just yes. <laughs> One, two, three. Oh god. Doors busted. Landlords in jail. Money's tight. Oh yeah, I forgot that they live together. So of course, yeah. Oh. Whoa. Oh my god, Anthony, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Do I just keep cutting carrots? Yes, Anthony. He has money, he's handy. He You're money. putting me on the spot. I guess my knee jerk concern would be that he's a Viking and might only use our home as a temporary base before moving in. The is more plentiful. Oh god, we can't afford to keep <laughs> He's a Viking. Oh, Rachel. Rachel and I have been dating for the equivalent of a year. Oh, really? Because I feel like I've been hearing about that for two years. You can't just microwave a relationship like it's a bean burrito. Annie, I'm living with that's your funny. Well, I ain't living with your wack ass. Don't know whether to keep cutting carrots or asking me to take a poop, brother. Can we discuss this later? Rachel's on her way, and I'd like to practice my smile. <laughs> I guess it was just air. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell do you have all those muscles if you're going to bitch about moving boxes? Is the air working in here? I'm sweating like a Catholic on Judgment Day. <laughs> <laughs> Humor. There's something in there blocking the vent. Chang, probably. <gasps> Music. Oh! <laughs> of course. <laughs> he would have a blade. Third edition. Mint. Two hundred dollars retail. Oh, are they gonna sell these? 160 on the street. We might not have to get the dean involved here. <laughs> Jeffrey, these are stolen. From who? By who? How long ago? It's from whom, by whom. But he nailed the third question. <laughs> we are the sure. If we hand these over, they'll really go missing. And you think that money's going to be used to cut our paychecks or to make another rapping peanut butter? <laughs> I can't believe what I'm More for us. I'm an accomplice now. If I walk away, I'll only get into heaven by turning you what in. What about your restaurant? What about your kids? <laughs> oh my god. Miss Bennett, when God talks to you, what language does he use? <laughs> because in my experience, but if we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this clean and safe. 
<laughs> we're gonna move these to a restaurant and credit cards and we're gonna sit on them until we know they're cold. Then we're gonna price them to a third party and we're gonna unload them. Why does she remind me of Denzel Washington right now? Trail. Yeah, yeah great. great. Wonderful. Okay. <coughs> Let's count these babies up. Yeah, great. She's so, like, she knows exactly what to do. That's hilarious. I'm Did you tell Annie about your water pick? I suppose now is as good a time as any. <laughs> I own a water pick. Annie has one too. You guys both care for your teeth the same amount. Rachel used to mop floors when she worked at Kmart. She mops good. <laughs> this is a real conversation. Are we being bugged by the feds? <laughs> what do you think happens after you die? I don't know. You're lucky. <laughs> he knows. Oh God. What about pile of bullets? You want to decide on a roommate with a 1993 old West themed VCR game? That's actually really cool. So it's a, on the VCR? Yeah, it's not okay, we do have to. We all have to, and one day we'll tell you why. But for now, let's simply retire to the TV area. For the highest stakes, 1993 interactive VCR game of your entire young adult lives. <laughs> okay, let's see what you got. The music! <laughs> she smells it. <laughs> this is good okay. stuff. Here's what is. 25% for each of us. Take it or leave it, Britta. Legalize it. Don't change. <laughs> hey, guys. Hey. <laughs> something sketchy is happening. I don't care. So I'm just going to back out of the room now. He and, can't uh, leave. Oh, my God. <laughs> I did not see anything. Britta, find some rope. No. No. <laughs> starts with six bullet tokens, ten gold. This is so cool. What the heck? Token. Token. And the amount of their bid in gold. What's going on? Shh. Ready? Yes. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. What is going on? Are we supposed to be bidding? Wrong. I bid. Pow, bang. Rattler. <laughs> bang five. Bang. Yeah. Bang, bang, five. Bang. Mad bang. What are you doing? Stop that. He said collect your tokens. He can't see you. Didn't Abed shoot whoever's five? Draw! Bang, 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 Draw! We have numbers! Bang, 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 uh, bang! Okay, What's... okay, I don't think we're doing this right. I'm sure this is a game and not some art film. Now what do we do? We rewind it and start over. It's okay. We gave it our best shot, no? <laughs> I'm sorry, Rachel, is this your home? Okay. Oh, ah! no, I'm Denise. Rachel, we can do this. It's okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Howdy. Howdy. I no. love textbooks. Oh my god. <laughs> They're blackmailing him. Well, you're not getting out of here. I'm trying. Try harder. Go. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess this is like Breaking Bad in a, in a way, right? And she's... Because <laughs> chemistry. I stole all these books and put them in this room so I could come kiss them. That's all. Thank you. <laughs> I'm on parole. Exactly. So keep your mouth shut or we'll send this file to everybody. What do you mean everybody? Everybody! <laughs> Look, you guys can split the money. I'm just gonna leave quietly. Goodbye. <laughs> Yeah. What the hell? Yeah. Let's leave until we're done with this deal. Surely, this is not what. And is helping. We had our chance to think about that. He dropped this on us like a ton of bricks. Right, Icky? Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> this is getting insane. Crackhead Bill sure ain't the forgiving type. You green player. Yes, partner. You knew better than that, can't you? <laughs> yes, partner. Picking up what you want to draw. Oh, this is a good one. Keep this for when you're in a quick draw. Rachel, your turn. What do I do? You roll, you roll here. <laughs> God, I've been in situations like this where you're just like, I'm not even into this at all. Five bullets. I raise six. Eleven. Pass. Reverse. Hold it. Yeah. Did you <laughs> say yeehaw? Anyone that didn't loses a turn. Collect your coins. Hey, Anthony, I'll trade you two snakes for a bullet. Just say yes. I don't want to die. Stop her, Rachel. Stop her. <laughs> no, bid five. Tornado! Tornado! Nine! Tornado! Pass! <laughs> Two tornado! Pass! Double! Draw! Bang! Oh, oh, come on. You son of a bitch! <laughs> <laughs> Looks like modern times have come after all. See you in the city. 
I want to go home. Me too. No, we have to play again. Abed, I oh, God. One of your special times, okay? Abed, I don't like this side of you, and I do not like that side of VCR technology. <laughs> I'm glad that it's a dead medium. <laughs> I don't really know how girlfriends work, but I don't think you have one anymore. Aww. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, cool. See you there. I'm meeting my guy in an hour. He wants to see a sample, set a price, and then we'll do the exchange. A sample. <laughs> What's supposed to stop her from robbing you guys blind? What are you gonna do? Call the cops? I'll go with her. Oh, yeah. Good plan. Yeah. Leave Hickey here and the two of you do the deal. Yeah, what the hell? When did I volunteer for Guantanamo dude? <laughs> two guys, calm down. I'm sure we can work this out. We just need to stay cool and talk it through. I'm sorry. Oh my okay. god. Work out the way I I'm sorry. Uh, but you didn't leave me any choice. You were acting very poorly. I didn't know if I could trust you anymore. You dragged me into this. Oh man. You're packing? Yeah. You're leaving? Aww. Yeah. For that because that movie. What is it? Yeah. Zach Efron movie. So I thought you moving in here was some kind of moral victory. What? No. I mean, unresolved issues involving the black guy and all these photographs. Troy? And screw you. What did I have to do with mom? I was 13. Aww. I didn't know she goes to the school. Hey. I'm here to do my third <laughs> apology. His friend. Hey. Hey. I want to tell you something. Uh, but this is adorable. Just because but... it's adorable doesn't mean it's not important. <laughs> I've been accelerating our relationship because I've been worried I wouldn't pass a lot of the tests. I wanted you to move in because I thought if Annie was around, I'd have less chance of screwing things up. You're not screwing things up, though. Aww. I don't always see it coming. I don't want it to happen with you. Well, don't manipulate me and don't keep secrets from me, and we'll probably be okay. Yeah. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> yeah, sure did. Oh God! Oh God! Oh God! Oh, you hired a stunt person. Oh, no, God. I did not. <laughs> Maybe twenty thousand dollars. Twenty thousand dollars. Twenty non thousand dollars. Twenty regular dollars. Might get that from a recycling place. These are misprints, honey. Check out page one hundred and five. Oh my God! Because there's, there's no page numbers. Ah, oh, well. Problem, you know. Class, turn to page. There is no page. Oh, wait, there's no page number. You can't turn to it. But it's better things to do. With who is this guy? I want to know who he is. Saying it, Troy was an important part of our apartment. He kept the peace. Yeah, going a little crazy without him. Maybe we need to live with a therapist. Or at least someone crazier than us. <laughs> Ching. <laughs> Britta. Oh. Craigslist, I Craigslist is the way to go. <laughs> Crazy and a therapist. Are you wearing the same clothes from yesterday? We went through some stuff. But we learned something. No, we didn't. We learned that sometimes there's no lesson. How was that? <laughs> Pile of bullets. Can we just get this meeting over with? So how'd the cleanup go? I learned how to smile. Don't step, don't step to me. I like coffee and water. Don't step to me. <laughs> Damn it, I lost it. I lost it! <laughs> Who was that, sweetie? Guess they want me for that uh, Wild West videotape board game thing. Pile of bullets? Yeah. What? Devin, you pick up the phone right now, you call these people, and you tell them you want this part. These VCR games is where every oh man, did you see that you just became the Luke Skywalker <laughs> of the new Star Wars. We've got to move. We do. Oh yes, indeedy. We've got to move to Los Angeles. <laughs> work here. Oh please, you call Apple Computers work? Oh man. He offers stock options. Oh man. I think we should start looking for some right now because what? we're going to be able to afford it. You're just going straight down. Straight down. Everything, every choice is the wrong choice here. Pile of bullets. Oh, yes. Oh, my God. 
Oh my God. Sometimes, yeah. Jeez. Oh man, that's hilarious. Well, what a funny episode. Ah. It was lighthearted, but also just like... <laughs> sometimes Shirley is really, really out of her mind. Like it's, it's shocking sometimes. You're like, damn. Um, but I, I don't know, it was funny. It's like kind of a, it felt a little like a Denzel Washington movie felt like a little bit of Breaking Bad. It's just like that. And the, the, the song that kept coming on whenever they were talking in that storage room was just, it's so funny. It's just so, it's just so perfect. Um, yeah, it was just a fun episode. Very fun. Yeah. <laughs> um, and God, Abed. Abed. I love that um, they prolonged this relationship. I just thought it would be kind of like a one time thing. So seeing her again the second time and a few episodes ago, I was like, oh, I didn't think we would see her. Um, but then I just I just think it's cool. Like there's always some there's 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 people out there for each other that you just fit well with. And I, you know, I relate to Abed. I always say that I always do. So I was like, it's it's nice to hear like stuff like that. Like what Ab Abed was saying, he's just like, truthfully, I just don't know. Like I just don't have the my ticker is broken. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing or if I'm you know like, are you gonna stay or are you gonna go? Am I doing too much? Or am I doing too less? It's it's really hard when you just don't have the again that foundation of the love support the. And, you know, an autism or being on the spectrum can definitely play a huge part, just being neurodivergent in, in just navigating relationships. So coming across a Troy <laughs> is like really rare, to be honest. Um, and so if you, if you find yourself a Troy or an Abed and you guys just fit like that, like genuinely cherish that relationship. And so I really, I give it up to Abed for stepping out of his comfort zone and getting into a relationship because I'm sure having a friendship is, is hard enough, but going into a romantic relationship is probably causing him a lot of stress, which was what we saw in this episode, like losing Troy um, and that void there between him and Annie is like, there's a lot of issues coming up from that, but also trying to make sure the relationship succeeds because he really does like her, but he's also unaware of like, is, is he, he does not have the, it's like the compass is broken, you know? He just doesn't know which way is up, which way is down. And that's how it is for some of us. It's just the truth. Whether people want to believe it or not, it's just the truth. And that's why I feel like patience is truly a virtue, truly understanding where people are coming from and um, um, I just watched a TED talk um, about trauma yesterday and it was, she said something about, instead of asking like, why, why do you do that? Like if someone does something that you just don't like, why do you do that? Rather ask what happened to you? What, why? And what is it? Why is it that you do those things? Like, let's start from the beginning. Like, what happened? And if only more people had that, like, outlook, life would be a little more easier for each person. Because, again, not, I think a lot of people, you know, that whole pull your, uh, what is it? Pull your, what is the bootstrap analogy? Um, I, it really doesn't work, to be honest. You really, honestly, if you, if you think that that analogy works, it's not some of it works but not all of it because the reality is is we don't all start at the same place we all are in some people are going to be here some people are going to be down here some people are going to be really down below because they're just not um emotionally um in, in, in intelligent enough like the development stunted because of what happened in childhood i i don't know why like the more I'm learning about this stuff, the more it's like, aha, like it's such a, okay, that makes total sense, 100%. And maybe it's because I've always been a person who's been very in, into like asking the why since I was ki a kid. 
So for me, I'm like always, I'm always like looking for answers. So when an answer comes, I like soak that in. I'm like, well, yeah, that makes sense for me. But it all stems from childhood. And everyone is going through something. And some people are more privileged in just how they were brought up. <laughs> like, it's just the truth. And there's like that YouTube video where they're running. It's like they're running a race. And the coach is telling everyone to, to stand in this line. And he starts asking, how many of you have been... Um, it, who are in a two-parent home how many of your parents are still married and each time they would take like a leap forward uh how many of you had uh, private schooling every time they would take a leap forward and then once he was done asking the questions you saw this deep divide between some of the students and it was it's pretty heartbreaking but it's the reality and he was trying to make a very important point he says like you, do you look behind you and see how far ahead you are of some of your students. And he said that it doesn't mean that they can't, they still have to run the race. The people that are all the way back there still have to run the race of life or the marathon of life. You can't stop. You got to keep going. And it's just the way the world is. So pulling yourself by the up by the, the bootstraps sure is like a cool thought, but it doesn't, some people really need support. You know, imagine some of those people who were out in the front walked back and they helped their fellow man, Do you know, like with their, with their support, with their privilege of having a more stable, functional environment. And they brought people up because that's what it is. It's a lot of people are falling behind and are going to be left behind um, in this, in the race of life because no one is willing or has the patience to stay behind and just wait for people. People are just like, eh, forget that, I'm done. Like, I'm gonna go for ahead. And and honestly, I understand that too. I'm not gonna judge people on that. I'm just saying the world would be better if people took a breath <laughs> and realized it's not necessarily even a race. It is more of a marathon and it's a, and there is no like, if you get to the finish line, I think I said this in another video, maybe it was just the same thing, but getting to the finish line means, yeah, you, you won, but you're all alone. <laughs> you're all alone at the finish line. And it's just, I just believe when you have the privilege, use that privilege. And it's not just an ethnicity, skin tone privilege. I mean, really having a stable, functional upbringing is the biggest privilege you can have and of course having some wealth of course but having a functional stable environment as a child is is gold it is priceless so the, the bootstrap analogy you can say it until you're blue in the face but for most people it will not work people need extra help they need extra patience they need it and whether you like it or not that's just how it is and people like abed need that extra support and and you may not some it may it may not be what you're cut out for so you you leave and that's totally fine too but then there's people like troy where it, they are cut out for it that they're there 100 percent. and so it's just i just like the the i guess the 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 important issues that they bring up in this series it's like there's a there's so much more it's so much more deep just the couple of words all that said just like sparked that thought in my head like to really go into this because i i get him i completely get him i get it and it's like feels freeing to say it out loud because i know other people get it but they just don't feel free enough to say that like a lot of people want to pretend like oh, i'm functional <laughs> i'm good i'm good i i it's like no it's okay to be like i'm a little bit dysfunctional or i'm very dysfunctional but i'm trying but i'm working you know it's let's stop we got to be honest with ourselves self-awareness that's the way to getting help and going forward so it's awesome that this relationship is working out she's very patient with him and you know, Abed's doing his best and I agree with her. No manipulation, no lying. Be very honest and truthful and good communication will get you so freaking far in a relationship. 
And you know what you'll find out in relationships and some relationships, it's like pulling teeth to have open and honest communication. Some some people are just not. It's just too difficult. And maybe it will take time for them to also open up. And that's like a thing that you got to figure out. But that's the only way to really have trust. You just you have to have open communication and and work on if you manipulate work on not manipulating and being like, ask yourself, do I manipulate? In what ways do I manipulate? What's the definition of manipulation? Okay, maybe I do do that in some ways, or maybe I don't or whatever. It's just like self-awareness. So that's where I'm at uh, I, uh, <laughs> with, with Abed. I really appreciated uh, Annie's brother saying what he needed to say to Annie. is like, it's kind of like, screw you. <laughs> I was 13 years old. Like, what do you think? You know, like, I'm sure he's traumatized from, first of all, growing up with the parents that they grew up with. And then Annie going in, even though Annie was struggling and suffering, the way that the steps Annie chose to go through probably traumatized him too. So he's hurt too. And I think she was not aware of that. Like her actions did hurt her brother. And that's, that's, that's a hard one to really look at. Yeah, I've had these types of conversations with my brothers too, where I was like, I'm so sorry. I did not, I was in a bad, bad, bad place. And, you know, I, I feel like growing up, I was always like second mommy, because my brothers are a lot younger than me. Um, nine years younger, 14 years. And yeah, like they're quite young, quite a year, a few years younger. Um, and I was always there, um, always, and very much a caregiver and a, and a very close, but I was suffering through my own stuff. So eventually the move, the last move we made, which was here in Oregon, that one just, that was too much for me to handle. So it just threw me off. And from there, I could not catch up. I was just done, donezo, 14, just done. I was doing my best all up until then. And then I still start, started to still kept that the, the, the spirit within me was still alive, but there was parts of me that were breaking at that point. And then once I hit 18, 19, whew, yeah, gone, very much gone, introduced to alcohol, introduced to, to weed, unresolved trauma <laughs> not a good not a good uh match you know not not a good mix so there's times where i had to like look back and be like yeah i had to have that moment with my own brother so i'm hoping she has a moment with her with her brother um and it's not an easy conversation but you have to have it you have to you have to apologize where you know you did wrong um but that's it. I appreciate you guys for watching, for sticking by. If you listen to this much, thank you. Um, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Take care of everyone. Bye, everyone.